Yo, 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 what is up you guys? It's your boy LZ Hoops back at it again with another performance test. This time on the Nike Giannis Greek Freak 3s. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with the traction, the Giannis Freak 3s feature these long and thin rubber blades that are molded into a pressure map like traction pattern. For the most part, the traction does do its job very well in a clean court. You're able to stop on a dime and start quickly and shift left to right nicely as well. On a dusty court, this traction does pick up some dust and needs to be wiped in order to maintain its tackiness. I'm not too sure how all these shoes will hold up on a really, really dusty court, but if I were to guess, I feel like they won't be too, too bad. The traction pattern itself is also pretty quiet and doesn't squeak much, which is kind of a bummer to me. Uh, so in my opinion, the traction pattern does do its job well, but it isn't the best setup Nike has to offer. I actually would prefer if this traction squeaked a bit more. You know, I don't, I know the squeaky sounds don't really make a difference in the traction, but I think it's more like psychologically. So I would have preferred if Nike did that. And for the most part, you know, when you're doing your quick toe offs and your large steps, like Euro steps or jabs, it does stick to the ground pretty well. I don't recommend you guys using these shoes outdoors at all, actually. Like, the blades are both thin and pliable, and they wear down super quickly. Like, I actually have some fraying on the high wear areas already. And this is only after a few sessions to break these shoes in. So if you are looking for an outdoor shoe, you probably should stay away from these, because I feel like, you know, just the gravel and the pavement will just grind away the bottoms like no tomorrow. So overall, you know, I rate the traction in 84 out of 100. Um, in 84... Not an 85 solely because they don't squeak, no pun intended, but, you know, that's just a personal preference, and I really like squeaky shoes, so that's what it is. Next, moving on to the cushioning, you know, the Freak 3s feature this Phylon midsole with two large zoom pods in the forefoot. For the most part, the heel Phylon is pretty plush, and actually feels very good on feet. There's nothing really to write home about, as it's just regular Phylon, and not like React or anything. The forefoot zoom is something that you were able to feel under your foot, but it doesn't offer that responsive feeling that is usually, you know, attributed to zoom. It feels like you're stepping on something, but it isn't snappy or it isn't responsive, like zoom air. Uh, on top of that, core feel is not the best in these shoes, as you're sitting on top of a large zoom unit and a phylon midsole. It's not as bad as a LeBron, but it's not as good as a Kyrie, so it's somewhere in between there, more on the LeBron side. If you guys like like the adapt uh, NXT BBs, whatever they're called, if you like those shoes, it's pretty similar in regards to court feel, but it's definitely not as good on the court feel department as its previous shoes. So, you know, overall, I actually didn't particularly like this setup. Um, I felt as if the phylon and the heels make my movements feel sluggish, and I couldn't really feel the zoom up front, which is a bit of a bummer given how, you know, how they kind of hype the zoom units up. And actually, like, when I was playing in these, the heel plushiness, I feel like just made the heel-to-toe transition very, very clunky. Like, not, like, clunky because it's a hard sole, but clunky because it feels me to, it forces me to kind of do a heel-to-toe transition instead of just striking on my midfoot slash forefoot. And I don't like that because it feels unnatural to me. So when I drive, I drive on my, like, my forefoot, my toes, right? And I feel like this is almost forcing me to go like more of my midfoot heel area, and I'm not too fond of that. But the impact protection actually is pretty good. Um, you know, so far, since these are brand new, when you kind of land, the phylon is very soft, and, you know, you have a really good impact protection. Um, I'm not too sure how quickly the phylon midsole will bottom out, and when it bottoms out, the impact protection won't be as good. But as of now, for a new broken-in shoe, I'm actually pretty impressed with the impact protection. But as a guard, I don't like the setup at all. So I think, you know, if I were to rate this, I'd give this a 70 out of 100 due to the lack of responsiveness and the sluggishness that I felt as a guard. But if you are a player that just moves front and back and rebounds and just jumps, you actually might really enjoy the cushioning. Next up, we got the support in lockdown. The Freak 3s feature this thin performance mesh and synthetic upper that really molds to your feet. Boy, when you put these on your feet, man, these things feel godly. And it actually feels like a sock, almost almost like flyknit. But there is no backing on the performance mesh, so it does fit well and leaves no dead space. But the containment and lateral stability is sacrificed. The Freak 3s also have this midfoot strap that is meant to provide additional lockdown, but I feel like it doesn't really do much. It's mostly there for aesthetics. Since most of the lockdown on this shoe comes from the lacing systems and the materials. 
The Onuses also have an internal and external heal cup, and these uh, the heal cups actually do do a pretty good job when it comes to lockdown. So overall, the lockdown is very solid in this shoe, and I really have had any issues with any Nikes when it comes to lockdown, and there's almost zero heel slippage, so I really do like the lockdown on these shoes, and I think they did a very nice job. However, the worst part of the shoe is the support. Man, the support on these are terrible. First of all, there is no lateral support and containment coming from the mesh-like upper. There isn't any caging to provide that additional lateral support when you cut or when you play defense, and the mesh itself is super thin and flexible, and does not contain your foot. There was this time when I was playing defense on this guy, you know, he beat me, this guy was really good, right? So I tried to plant to recover, and my foot like just slid off the side. And it feels like the PG5s, where when you do a hard movement, your foot rolls over the bed, and I did not like that at all. So I just feel like if you're a defensive-minded player, you should probably stay away from the support. Furthermore, you know, actually, because Nike was trying to cater towards Giannis so heavily, they carved out a large portion of the midsole. And in doing so, if you were to just, like, shift your weight to the lateral side of the shoe, the midsole completely, and I mean completely, collapses. Like, in the next clip, you'll see I purposely transfer my weight onto the lateral side of the shoe, right? Almost mimicking, like, a slow-motion ankle sprain. And if this shoe had the decent support, it would stop that motion or at least slow that motion down, right? Because it would, you know, you'd hit the outrigger and it kind of just teeter back. But on the Freak 3s, you see that when you put the force down, the midsole collapses and it exacerbates that, that motion since the midsole and the air zoom unit are too soft. So you're almost, you know, compressing the midsole heavily and it's kind of causing you to roll more. So I feel like the lateral support, support is super suspect and I'm not a big fan of these at all. And just when you think things can get, can't get any worse, there have been a lot of people saying that the midsole collapse causes the midfoot piece to pressure the arches. Personally, I have not felt this, but I just wanted to put this out there just in case any of you guys had bad arches or flat feet. Overall, man, the lockdown gets 90 out of 100, but that support and lateral containment, oh, solid 55 out of 100. Those things are terrible, man. I, I'm, I'm, I can't stress that enough. The support is almost non-existent. Finally, we move on to the fit, style, and durability. You know, the great free the threes, excuse me, actually do fit true to size. However, this shoe is not wide foot friendly at all. The shape of the shoe is like a spade, right? Which means that the midfoot is super narrow, the forefoot's super wide, and the toe is super narrow as well. Like, my foot isn't shaped like that at all, so to me, it really hurt the midfoot by squeezing it from the uh, lateral, kind of like the phylon midsole, so I really disliked it. And I don't even have, you know, wide feet per se. I just kind of have the same width all from the toes to the heel. So I didn't like that at all. But, it, you know, after you start playing them for a few times, it does go away. But just know the first couple break-in games, man, they're going to be terrible for your feet. My favorite feature on, this, on these shoes are the style. I think these look super dope. Um, and they look like the modern KD7, which is one of my favorite silhouettes. And I'm really digging these. So if these have, like, if they're on sale, I might buy these as runners because they're quite comfortable. But for basketball, I don't think these are the best option. So, what's my final verdict? Man, like, I, I think Nike fumbled the bag heavy with these shoes. You guys know that one new Smiley song featuring Drake? Yeah. These shoes are like Smiley's versus Terrible, man. And he really just fumbled the bag. And I was wondering why, like, Giannis wasn't wearing these shoes during the finals. And now I know why. Like, honestly... Nike tried to cater too much towards Giannis's unique playstyle that they disregarded 99.99% of their consumer base. No one is doing what Giannis does. I'm not 6 foot 11, 250. Like I I can't do what he does. So why would I buy a shoe that is meant for him? You know, it's just too too niche in my opinion and I really dislike that as a guard, right? But if 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 you are someone that plays like Giannis, if you're someone that moves Later, uh, not as much laterally, but more front and back and jumps and runs a lot. I think you actually might enjoy these shoes just for me as a guard who needs to rely on shifting from left to right to get past the defense. I really dislike these shoes. So overall, the score of these comes out to be 74.75 out of 100. And I know I strongly recommend against buying these shoes if you are a quick and shifty guard or anyone that likes to play lockdown defense due to the support. And I also recommend that people that are heavier and need that lateral containment and support don't buy these shoes at all. You know, the midsole collapse is just, it's, you know, it doesn't limit you 
physically, but it can limit you mentally as well. So I strongly suggest you guys not buy these shoes if I, if I am what you just described. But if you are someone that just runs and jumps a lot, like you're a PJ Tucker with no defense, or you just like shooting threes and you just run it, run around like, you know, you actually might really enjoy these shoes because they are very comfortable just for a guard. I repeat, do not buy these shoes. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed my content, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, that'd mean a lot to me and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.